chaos theory, the butterfly effect. What are these things really? Hey there, future internet users. I've been Trace, and I will hopefully still be him in the future, and this is probably still D-News. We're gonna see. You've probably heard about the butterfly effect, usually explained by the idea that a butterfly flaps its wings in Brazil and causes a hurricane in Texas. Premise ridiculous. Of course they cannot do that. There are millions of butterflies. If everyone caused the beginnings of a storm, Earth would be in chaos. The thing is, that's not really what the butterfly effect is about. It's about how tiny changes in big systems can have complex results. Systems in this case could be anything from weather patterns to how big groups of asteroids move to how lots of people interact. For an example of a system, picture a tilt-a-whirl ride at a carnival. If you don't know what that is, it's a rotating and shifting platform with shell-like cars, each rotating on a smaller circle with people in them. It has rules, and it follows those rules rigidly. The platform rotates the same every time, and the carts can only rotate around specific points. By analyzing this, you can see the butterfly effect in action. If I, say, sat alone in one of the Tilt-A-Whirl carts, it would spin completely differently than if you sat in there with me, right? Together, we would be heavier, and the cart would have a completely different ride. Every spin would be completely different from when I took the ride alone, and unpredictably. Now imagine all the carts as part of a system, with tiny changes to each, someone being a little lighter or heavier in a cart, someone sitting forward on the seat or with their back on the wall. All of these tiny variations affect the whole tilt-a-whirl system. That's the butterfly effect, which does have a scientific name, sensitive dependence on initial conditions. This was originally discovered by an MIT mathematician and meteorologist, Edward Lorenz, who was using an old computer to calculate weather patterns. He ran a simulation and wanted to see it again. The first time, he put the data in to six decimal places, but figured the second time those tiny fractions of a degree wouldn't matter, so he only used three decimal places. In the end, because he cut out just those few fractions of a fraction, the whole simulation completely changed. It was unrecognizable the second time, and that's when the crap hit the counter. At the time, mathematicians thought if you changed a little at the start, it would only change a little at the end. That was logical. But these systems don't behave that way, and we needed new math to understand why. In walks chaos theory. Chaos theory, by definition, deals with the complex systems whose behavior is highly sensitive to slight changes in conditions. It appears to be chaos, but it's actually governed by the same rules as everything else in nature, physics, and the universe. But because there are so many moving parts, it's just impossible for us to comprehend them all. Imagine watching all the people get on the tilt-a-whirl and then guessing how every card is going to move. <laughs> no way. Chaos theory was groundbreaking when it was discovered because it threw off classical physics. Isaac Newton's laws of nature, equal and opposite reactions and such, were all imagined in a clockwork universe. A little change here and a little change at the end. Not one filled with apparent chaos. Basically, he thought if we could understand the basic rules of the universe, we should understand everything in the universe too, which seems wrong because even a tiny change in something with as many moving parts as the universe would mean any assumptions we made would be astronomically wrong. And that's super scary. We went from grasping a good chunk of our universe to who knows where. But the universe is not random. It's governed by rules, rules which mathematicians have worked on understanding for centuries. Take nature, for example. It might seem random, but it's governed by rules, and that's why it makes shapes like this. These are called fractals and they show us how chaos is really order. It's an infinitely complex repeating pattern that can appear chaotic at times, but is actually ordered. Chaos theory is an attempt to approximate and understand all the people getting on a tilt-a-whirl and how the tilt-a-whirl will then react to their actions, thus finding order in the chaos. The more we understand the math, the better handle we will have to predict how a complex system could react to any tiny changes. The practical applications are huge, from understanding the brain to social interaction to how gas moves around in our atmosphere. A study in the Journal of Family Psychology followed 95 couples attempting to predict divorce rates using chaos theory math. They were correct 87% of the time. Turbulence and weather slash climate change models, those keep getting better as we get more data because we can harness that chaos math. The rules that govern fluid dynamics, they're pretty well understood. We get temperature and pressure, volume and mass, we get solar energy and gas emissions and so on. 
But if somehow a tiny bit of moisture, dust, heat, or cold causes a cloud to form somewhere we didn't expect, the whole system can be thrown off, which is maddening. And that's why the National Weather Service runs the same weather models again and again and again, tweaking it each time, so eventually they get an inkling of a probability of a true result. So when you think of the butterfly effect, what should you think of? Understanding order from chaos. The original model Lorenz was working on appeared to spit out chaos until they graphed it, and then it looked like this. It looks like a butterfly. It didn't get its name from an actual butterfly, but from the graph of chaos becoming order, with just little changes. It's pretty and insane, and it's pretty insane. To see how the butterfly effect could wreak havoc on a female police detective's life after she realizes she can contact her estranged father two decades in the past using only the airwaves broadcast via her ham radio, don't miss the series premiere of Frequency, Wednesday, October 5th at 9, 8 central, only on The CW. If chaos is really just order, is anything in the universe truly random? Jules looked at it here. This predicting randomness issue is kind of a huge problem. The better math, science, and technology are at assessing prior conditions, the better they'll be at making random things predictable. And in fact, much of what is purported to be random is actually pseudo-random. Math was not my strong suit, but I find it super fascinating. What about you guys? Subscribe so you get more D-News, and let us know down in the comments.